Get well. Yes, Monte Carlo. A small principality in the Sterling area. And as usual, all eyes are focused upon him. As his Rob Walker into Lotus is prepared for him to drive against the Porsches and the new 1961 Ferraris, which take their places on the starting grid. The start, not just of the first major Grand Prix of the year, but the start of the first race of a new Grand Prix formula, limited to one and a half litres. And off they go, into the gasworks turn. And out of it. Ferrari leading from the two Lotus cars of Clark and Moss. Up the hill from San Devot, Moss keeps the veteran Lotus well up amongst a field of brand new 1961 models. By lap 13, he had lost half a side panel and won the lead. May's Lotus is lapped, and Bonnier races second with the Porsche. And the Ferrari falls back to third as the cars turn right and into the tunnel. With a touching, almost eccentric patriotism, Moss was continuing to insist on driving a British car whenever possible. Could the Lotus hold off such a weighty challenge from the Italians? Even an extra 30 brake horsepower is no substitute for the skill of Moss. As round and round the classic Monaco circuit, he drives the race of his life. Saint-Devote. Then, relentlessly, ominously, almost presumptuously, the two Ferraris poised themselves behind the allegedly slower car. Well, 30 brake horsepower was a lot to play with. First Phil Hill, then Richie Ginther coiled themselves to pounce on the prey. Past the pits and Tavoni signals Ginther to take over the attack. And Ginther does that very thing and slams past his teammate in pursuit of Sterling. But Rob Walker has a signal ready. And Moss gets the gem on Ginther. He gained precious yards and snookered the angry Ferraris with some stupendously tactical lapping of back markers, and with time for a courteous wave of thanks to Maurice Trantignon. <laughs> Moss could afford only one eye on the road, the other on the frantic pit signals, and on his rearview mirror. Still, he kept them in his mirror, till the two snarling Ferraris ran out of time and road. Just one lap to go. Let's watch Sterling on this final lap as he drives into our memories with an unforgettable display of virtuosity. wait to acclaim him and the flag falls for Sterling Moss to mark his third victory in the Monaco Grand Prix a feat no other driver has accomplished crowds surround him Louis Chion embraces him but keeps a firm grip on the trophy Genther has a well-earned drink and while Sterling goes off on his lap of honor Chion goes off with his trophy for next year's race it is remembered as one of the finest competitive drives of all time.